Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope that everyone's doing great. Today we're going to do something a little bit different and it's not an actual review, but I was going to do a um, finds this week, like a crafty finds this week, and I decided not to do that because I had turned it into like a distress versus archival. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, comparison, I guess. So this is the new Tim Holtz archival distress ink colors. And I'm gonna go. I have all three of them. They come in three packs. Um, the first one is well, not the first one. I don't know how they're numbered, but one comes in uh, uh, ground espresso, hickory smoke, black silk, vintage. This is spice marmalade, um, fossilized amber, barn door, picked raspberry, which is one of the the ones I seem to grab the most. It seems like. And then the other one, and they were $11.99 at Hobby Lobby. But Hobby Lobby has a Tim Holtz sale right now, so it's 40% off, which is better than trying to work the coupon system. Dusty Concord, Faded Jean, Marmalade, Marmade Lagoon, I don't want to say Marmalade, and Peeled Paint. So I'm sure he's going to come out with some type of tin to store your... Um, archival ink pads in because I, I think on the video he said that these are a little bit larger than the other uh, the miniature I think he said that I'm not sure so what we're going to do is play musical storage space to see if we can get this to fit in this uh, Michael's 7x5 container and I got this great idea from Barry Crafty who store, showed me that she stored her these in there as well because who wants to spend all that money on the other one I did they had a, a great sale and I got you know I used some coupons and that's what happened and it's still not gonna fit but we're gonna make it work no worries because I like puzzles so let's see all right, so we got them all in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and we have room to kind of finesse them around. Um, I will probably store these like this, right side up, versus upside down, because you know they say to store your inks upside down, but I probably will store this this way. Okay, so I don't have all of the distress colors that I do in. Um, what is this the archival but I'm gonna pull out the colors and we're gonna do a, just a quick comparison okay so I have uh, a few I have enough to do a, I think a decent comparison because I think I have one or two from each one um, spice marmalade uh, fossilized amber pick raspberry black soot vintage photo and mermaid lagoon Okay, so let's draw our land in our line in the sand. And we're gonna do A for archival and D for distress. Now this is not an official or real test of any sort. So uh <laughs> I mean it's just for fun. So I have this little reindeer already um prepped. We're gonna use Vintage photo first. All right, so I went ahead and kind of did a little label. So uh, just put the initials on all of them. And I have a wipe. And I also have um, pep towel. So vintage photo. I stamped this out once already. Um, as I said, I was going to do a different type of video, but I felt like this would be a little bit more fun. And, um, I will say that when you stamp it out, it does have the impression of, um, distress ink. But it's permanent, so we're going to see... And I can already tell you that I feel like I'm going to have 
six different stamped images because why not right and at the end this will probably be fun to put in some type of junk journal like a, a swatch <laughs> and I'm just cleaning and wiping the little reindeer I think this reindeer is cute and I've always wanted to stamp out in that color the another thing that I've noticed about the distress inks is that as you all know I don't know much um, when it comes to the distress setup setup I've only been using them for a few well, one year almost, um, close to eight, nine months. I've had them, but I never really used them like that. And again, just the same exact way. All right, so you can see the difference. And this is what I was about to say. When I've used the Distress Inks in the past, this is the, what I got. And I, I didn't like that until I did like a different type of paper. They look they though they are the exact same color, but this one looks more pronounced and this one looks more distressed. Alright, next up is Mermaid Lagoon. And I like how easy they are to come off. They have this little flip, like a lip. I don't know if I actively purchased any of the smaller archival inks because i like the larger pads and i really wish these were in a regular size so we'll see what happens i can see all of the distress colors coming out in this distress archival situation and here we go with mermaid lagoon again it looks just like distress ink but uh, it's just darker in color and I'm just wiping off my little stamp with a uh, baby wipe and then I'm cleaning it and that was Mermaid Lagoon a blue reindeer huh <laughs> it could catch on and now I'm stamping out the Mermaid Lagoon in distress and what I've noticed in the past when I've used Distress is that it doesn't get the whole entire image. It gets some of the image, but not all of it. So, let's see. Mermaid Lagoon. And the same thing. I think what I'll do this time, instead of cleaning and wiping, I'm going to clean and wipe it and let it dry and then come back. All right, so we got fossilized amber. And I think that's what Mr. Host was talking about, hard to open. I have another um, different color that the lid just falls right off. And even though I understand how he feels, as the consumer, you feel like, you know, it's not doing, performing like it's supposed to. So I think that's why they changed it. All right. So even though I let it do the exact same thing, as you can tell with the fossilized amber, I did that one first just to make sure I wasn't screwing up this little thing. It still prints out, well prints, um, not prints, stamps out, kind of faded. I know it's Distress Ink, but you know. Um, some people actually do stamp with this, and I don't know if I would stamp with the Distress inks themselves because they fade they're always water reactive um or wet reactive even if you spill a can of soda on the project it's going to in my opinion run so now we're going to take our archival and we're going to go from there i'm really excited about using these inks because i love i love ink <laughs> To go along with projects but now i don't have to worry about the colors and things like that i could just use them and go because the blue lagoon uh, blue lagoon the mermaid lagoon is so pretty so you can even see like with these colors they're all doing the exact same thing they're more solid versus the archival they're not as solid now for the black soot which is um, the acronym is BS. <laughs> Interesting. 
All right. I think the black soot is probably going to be like, whoa. And I think I'll do the black soot comparison to the regular black archive link, um, which is interesting because a lot of the artists that are on Ranger have different color inks that are almost the same color. So the chemists are probably like in there cooking up a lot of crazy colors, right? That is so pretty. Very, very pretty. I love that. Black soot may be my new black ink. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I still feel like it's a just you know, it's distressed color. So it's gonna have that distressed, in my opinion, pigmentation versus the solid color inks. I hope that makes sense to you all. So now we're gonna go with our distress archival. And this is plain 110 cardstock paper, Georgia Pacific. Um, in case you're wondering, I don't have any special paper or anything like that. All right, and actually this looks pretty good. It's a little bit light versus this one. Uh, most of them have been true to color. This could be that I haven't used it in, but maybe once or twice and it's getting older, but you know, more dried out. But I really don't think ink dries out as quickly as we like to say it does. If you keep the lids on properly, and you store them properly, I don't think that that's really a, a major issue. All right, here is Pick Raspberry. I think this is one of my favorite colors, so hopefully, ooh, it's really pretty, look at that. Really bright. I mean, we already know what how Pick Raspberry looks, but this is gonna be one gorgeous pink <laughs> reindeer. Look at that. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Last but not least is Spice Marmalade. It's an orange color. And again, this color is very vibrant. I think something happened with the manufacturing on this, though. As you can see, it's kind of hanging out the um, container. A little bit but you know what we're still going to use it I'm definitely happy and you can see it kind of came out in the tube uh, the container as well you know I always say it's not a good stamping session unless I get ink all on my hand so that's what I did I just pushed it back in the container because you know not a bad thing to do to preserve your uh oh I did not put the peak pick raspberry down i got so excited about the spice marmalade and the pinkness of the color oh let's hurry up and fix that now my picked raspberry does not do right by me my distressed color at least it's always seems to be a little dry <laughs> so this is let me see i think i have an extra so i i do have um pick raspberry and it's not as dry as that other one i'm going to see if it's the ink or if it's actually not um if it's really dry or if i can salvage it putting this down kind of looks like rudolph right here and as i stated before in all of the comparisons so far they all do the exact same thing they have the color that looks distressed and then they have this which looks like it's not all there, but once it starts to dry, you can see the colors actually come in. All right, let's do the spice marmalade. And this looks supple. I do think, you know, with the new inks, the, the newer inks, whenever you purchase it, it has just more color, vibrant. I may actually have to store my inks upside down I don't normally store the distress inks upside down, but I may have to start. And 
that one came out the exact same as all the others. The only thing is the um, bell kind of didn't come out great, but it didn't come out great here. So now I'm going to get some, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to get um, a color pencil and some water and we'll, and an alcohol marker and see what happens. Okay, before I do that, I just want to show the back of the Distress Archival Ink for, well not versus, but the Distress Ink and it shows you the difference. Um on what they can do but let's see what it says it says permanent waterproof fade resistant multi-surface dye ink heat set on all surfaces clean with archival ink cleaner re-ink with archival re-inkers okay adult use only and this is set number three whatever that um, means and then this is set number 13 i did pick up from hobby lobby when it was um clearance uh, it says cord, let's see, ways to distress, um, create an aged effect on papers, ribbons, photos, and more anytime. Apply ink directly to surface and mix with water to create a modeled effect. Use ink on rubber or clear stamps and stencils for a ver variety of image layers. Blended ink with ink blending tools for a soft shaded look. Coordinates with entire distressed palette. Of products and you can go to ranger.com rangerink.com to find out more about it okay so this one says and this is what we're going to try right now it says permanent waterproof fade resistant now in the past I've told you before that whenever I use my alcohol markers sometimes my ink runs so let's see okay so I have color pencil from Stadler uh, Memento and it says fade resistant acid free dye ink. You can't see it, but that's what it says. I promise you. Dries on all paper surfaces, including coated and texture, fast drying on most papers, replace cap after use. And then this is a Firefly alcohol marker. And this is the one I usually have problems with. It just says use light touch when coloring as ink will flow quickly. Use two or more colors in the same color filling to achieve shading. Excuse the noise. Start with the lightest color first. Oh. And that is that. We have lots of bloopers today. And then we have our alcohol, our water mister. And it's just water, nothing fancy. So I'm just going to color the um, vintage photo with this pink just to see. So no runniness there. Now we're going to use our memento and we're going to color the um, fossilized amber. A lot of noise, a lot of noise today. And as you can see, you kind of color over it. This is a darker color. Um, that was the intention. Same thing with this one, the distress, and kind of color over it. Um, now I'm going to use the black soot because I usually use the black Ranger ink, jet black, to do this. So this green is darker too, so you can see the green on the side. And we're going to just color right over this one. And it doesn't run like the Ranger. Uh, other one does let's see and this actually does pretty good as well all right so now we're going to take our mister and we're going to spray this I know what's going on with this camera I apologize um, so let I don't know where it, I saw in the viewfinder it was working fine, but this is the color pencil, and it's fine. Then the um, memento pen uh, marker, and you can see it, it looks fine right here. No, 
no real issues and then this one you can see no real issues as well and then the alcohol marker that I use which is Firefly actually this one kind of looks better in my opinion but we're not doing a versus we're just doing oh okay that's what it does type of thing so now I'm going to take the mister oh lord <laughs> I cannot squirt I'll just squirt the whole daggone page okay so I squirted the deer and nothing happened if anything it just made the color a little bit more vibrant okay and now I'm going to go back and pick up with this paper towel I've been using and nothing happens nothing happens right we already know what's going to happen with the distress thing because brandy can't spray it's going to be everywhere but here we go and again again it uh made the colors more vibrant but as you can see they are starting to run so i'll take my paper towel and i can pick this up now i want to do something i can take my wet baby wipe and I can come in and I can kind of move this color around some which is the cool thing about distress right and I can also go down here let's go down to the spice marmalade and do the exact same thing with our baby wipe so you can take it and kind of run it in it is ink so the bad thing is, like, if I come back in two weeks, I can still come back and rub it in. And it'll do the same thing. Because it's always reacting to water, right? Or wetness. And this just makes it shiny. Nothing happens. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this kooky video. It was definitely fun to create. Um, so, it's like I said, it wasn't a versus or anything. It's just a comparison um, to see how they perform. As you all know, I usually do my distressing around the edge and um, on paper. So let's we can do that as well. And what I'm going to do is I don't normally recommend this, but, you know, for the sake of time and energy, we're just going to do a press test, right? It's not even a real press test because that's just how it looks pressed down. And that is Mermaid Lagoon. I'm going to press over here. And that is um, Mermaid Lagoon. And now if you wanted to get fancy, you could try. I think that this is a little bit um, very cool. You could just stamp those out if you're doing like a mixed media project. But you see with this, you can rub this in a little bit more and it can smear some. So let's show that really quickly. But overall, I think that if you were to purchase um, either one, it would be fun. They just do different things, even though they have the same name. And I am very happy that they came out with a little color distress. Because it's really just colored ink, right? <laughs> but it's super cool to have different inks to play around with and do random stuff. So... I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.